Hey, this is Nelson with Reed Sports. We're out here at Rice Creek for the Reed's Virtual Gun Fair this year. We wish everyone could be here. Unfortunately, it just isn't happening this year. Uh, I'm here with Joe from Swarovski, and we are talking about new binoculars in this video. We have the NL Pure in the 10 and the 12, and then we also have the brand new EL range. Joe, welcome. Tell us about these. Sure, thanks for having us. So um, we don't have it here, but we actually have three different models in the NL. Um, we have an 8x42, 10x42, and 12x42. So we have obviously three different models that are going to suit someone, um, whatever their needs may be. So for either your Midwest um, deer hunter slash bird watcher in the 8 power, to your more open country, um, you know, 10 power person, into your Western style long distance glass. 12 power person. Okay, so what changed between the EL and the NL? So this was the standard EL here, sure. not the range, but the standard EL. What changed between this and that that makes it different? Sure, so um, one of the biggest changes is ov overall size and shape and design. Um, you know, the EL, of course, is a legend, um, and so the NL had a lot to live up to, um, but one of the most noticeable things about the NL is the ergonomic shape. Um, you know, uh, compared to the EL's more uh, circular shape, we call this more of the... Um, hourglass, honeycomb style shape, um, and just makes it an overall more ergonomic, just kind of molds your hands right into holding the binocular um, and just makes it more immersed in your hands. I, you, you do notice that right away. Sure. Like just how well your hand just fits in there. It's interesting. How did they come up with this, this look, this feel, this style? So one of the things we did when we started this project is we consulted with hand specialists who basically came to the conclusion that your hand is not in a relaxed uh, position in a circular shape. So one of the more uh, the ideas behind this shape is to make your hand more relaxed, which is going to make your muscles more relaxed, which is going to allow you to be more relaxed holding binocular. Your muscles aren't twitching, so for those of you that may have seen um, shake in holding a higher power binocular, um, you know, using a 10 or 12 power, um, you may not notice that now because your hands are actually more comfortable and more relaxed because your muscles are more relaxed. Sure. And then the quality of the glass is just a little bit better too. Right? Yes, so uh, optically it does still have our Swaro Vision technology, which of course is a HD glass, true fluoride glass, um, and our field flattener lens technology, which go is going to give um, the user a 100% usable edge to edge, no matter where you're looking in the lens, mm -hmm. you're gonna get the very same images as if you were looking in the center of the lens. Um, and um, an extended eye relief for those people who are using eyeglasses. So that is what our Swirl Vision technology is. Um, it has that, and then of course, yes, optically it is, uh, it is more, uh, it is better contrast and clarity and resolution than the EL. Um, but for those users who still love the EL, mm -hmm. the EL is still available to them. Awesome. And then this, uh, does this one come with? So the forehead rest is an accessory. Um, the forehead rest um, was kind of one of those things that just helps give you another contact point. If you're not, you know, if you're a Western style hunter glassing off of a tripod, um, for your Midwest hunters who are hunting out of a tree stand or still hunting with a bow, it's going to help give that binocular a little bit more stability. Just creates another contact point. You know, you see these archers, um, they'll rest on the top of their cams, their binocular to help give them a little bit more stability. You don't have to do that because you can easily handhold this. Um, and of course, um, the repositioning of the focus wheel, you know, uh, the EL and most binoculars is in the very center right here on this NL. It's a smoother, faster focus wheel in a more comfortable position. So it allows for one-handed use. Uh, all in all, it is a truly ground up new yeah. design binocular for us. Um, the first time, you know, in a flagship binocular, the last time we did that was 1999 when we introduced the EL. So the EL has seen some changes over the years, but um, this is the this is a uh, new binocular from us for the first time in a long time. That's awesome, yeah, really, really nice. Yep. really, really interesting to hold. It is. It, it caught me off guard how how nice it felt to hold. Yes, um, it's it's honestly one of the very first things that you notice when you when you pick one up is is you didn't think you know you always thought that the EL was an ergonomic binocular and it is that's what EL stood for was ergonomic and lightweight mm -hmm. but the NL just 
instantly feels comfortable in your hand. Yeah. It's, it's truly impressive. And of course, um, with that being said, part of that new design is that you get a increased 20% field of view over the EL. So uh, for, for those of you out there, um, a 10 NL has a 20% wider field of view than, a e, than an e, its comparison EL. So, so the 10 EL. Correct. Yep. So the, the NL10 actually has a wider field of view than the EL 8.5 by 42. Wow. And the 12 NL has a wider field of view than the 10 power NL. So it gives somebody who is not sure um, whether they want to go up in magnification or down in magnification, it gives them some options to decide whether they want more magnification without sacrificing that field of view and still having that low light performance. Got it. That's awesome. They are, those, are, those are really great. Sure. Moving into the new EL range, we yeah. have a, a tracking assist on sure. there. What, uh, so we have that. Tell us about that. Then also tell us about uh, any other changes that were Sure. Made. So starting off, we'll start with the new features. Um, so uh, the differences from the first generation EL range are um, one of the most noticeable differences is we have the button on the right-hand side. So its previous version, the button was on the left-hand side. Um, now it's on the right-hand side. So for archery hunters um, who are most dom predominantly right-handed, um, they're able to hold their bow in their left hand and still be able to use it, pulling it out of their chest pack or you know out of their pack, they can still use it. Um, the other noticeable thing uh, that is different about it versus its predecessor is this will now range below 33 yards. So this mm. We'll start ranging at 10 yards and go all the way out to 2,200 yards. Um, the other substantial change over the uh, predecessor was this now is offering our Suaro Vision technology, like I mentioned in the EL and NL. This is a true HD binocular by us and encompasses um, ballistics and um, tracking assistant. Okay, so is this similar to the DS scope? where you have the app and you just put all your stuff in? Tell yeah, me about that. absolutely. So this, again, is an app. One of the cool features about, just like the D, we mentioned in the DS video, um, you can basically set this binocular up yourself using the app. So you can take the app, once you've downloaded it and paired it to your device, you can then set um, your brightness, how, how bright you want the um, display to be, mm -hmm. um, input your ballistics, and um, you can tell it whether you want it to range... Um, in yards or meters, or uh, your second line, whether you want it to give you a, a ballistic calculation in mil radian, uh, MOA, um, inches, centimeters, or even uh, to give you a click value. And you can do all that from the app and then send the information to the binocular. Um, same thing as the, uh, the DS, it will do G1, G7 ballistic curvature, um, and it will calculate um, all the way, it will calculate ballistics the full boat. So there's no stopping point for the ballistics, so it will give you a ballistic solution all the way to 2,187 yards. Wow. So um, big improvement over the last one. And, uh, and you can actually even simplify it if you're, if you're someone that cares more about the um, the, the minimum ranging distance, the 10 yards, and you don't care so much about the ballistic aspect, you can turn that feature off. Sure. So sure. if you're just a simple archery hunter, you just want you know your ranges and your angles, you can have it do that as well. Okay, so tell me about the tracking assistant, the new feature. That's sure. something that really interests me and, and how we use it on the app. Absolutely. So there's actually two different ways you can use the tracking assistant. So um, the first is obviously, as you mentioned, through the app. So when you... Um, Range your ob when you start ranging and using the binocular, um, what you do is then repair the binocular to the app, and then it will take your one of your last three measurements, and then you obviously have to have cell phone service for this feature. Um, it will then take where your range was taken from, and then give you a point on a map to where you were ranging, and then provide you a straight line of distance, and then also provide you a compass to where you can walk in. And when you start turning your phone, it'll tell you which direction to, to use. And so how we're using that basically is you range it, mm -hmm. you shoot your animal, mm -hmm. the animal in theory goes down right there, sure. right? 100% of the yep. time goes down right there. And then it will save that data to say you were here, you shot about there, and how, how close of a group it, is it? It's pretty close. It will get you within a proximity. You know, that's why we call it a tracking assistant, not, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
di direct you right to yeah. your game, yeah. um, but it'll get you pretty close. You know, having uh, played around with it, um, in fact, there was a situation last year, um, I'd probably some of us have been in that situation. Um, I was on a coos deer hunt last year and uh, I could have used this feature. You know, you, you shoot your animal at last light uh, or as the sun is fading and, and when you get up into your area that you shot the animal, you know, especially in today's world of longer range shooting, you know, you're talking three, 400 yards away, everything looks dis different, especially when you're on a hillside. So the ability to get you into an area without having, you know, one of your buddies stay back or, you know, you doing it solo, this, this absolutely helps you. Um, the other way to do that, use this feature is in the binocular itself. So this feature does not require cell phone service at all. So what you would do is, is you kind of touched on it, is you would take your range and then as you start walking to the area in which you think your target or animal is in, you then turn in range back to where you took the range. And inside the display, it will tell you whether to go, uh, there will be an arrow pointing up or down, which means forward or back. You have to go forward or back. And then there will be an arrow pointing left or right to tell you you need to go forward or back, left or right. Interesting. Yep. So even if you don't have the app, if you don't have cell phone service Correct. to be able to do that, like you're up in the mountains, sure. having issues with cell service, yep. like we've all been there. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the binoculars will actually give you directions left, right. Correct. Go. So, cool. bec and, and it does that because there's a built-in compass. So a lot of you are probably wondering, well, how does it do that? So there is a built-in compass that when you take your range, it's calcula calculating all your ballistics. It's calculating your distance to target, your angle to target, um, your ballistic, you know, your ballistic that you programmed into, and then a compass direction. Mm -hmm. So there is a compass calibration required, but it's taking all of that into effect when you get a range. That is so cool. Yes. So, so many cool new things with Swarovski this year. Um, one, one last thing real quick, there is a forehead rest. Correct, so just like the forehead rest on the NL Pure, it is an accessory, um, and, and it, some people will find it useful, some people, it, they may not need it. Mm -hmm. And it's different because it has the battery spot for the Co battery. Correct. That's right where the battery goes. Correct. So. Well, Joe, thanks so much for coming out and sharing with us. Happy this to is, be here. It's, it's really exciting, the cool stuff that Swarovski has coming out. Um, thanks for being out at Rice Creek Absolutely. with us today. All right, and as part of the Reed's Virtual Gun Fair, uh, we, we want to have all these available, but new product is, a, is arriving daily. It's very limited availability. So if we have it online, it is available. So please click the link below. The Gun Fair is happening April 30th through May 9th. Thanks so much for watching.